financial wisdom from financial struggle to financial stardom part four we looked at this last week and we shall be continuing we read ezekiel chapter 28 verse 4 to 5 in the second service he said with thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten the riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches. And thine heart is lifted up. Thine riches, thy riches. Last Sunday, we looked at three things out of scripture. General foundation. About financial abundance clarification. Number one. That God owns the earth. And everything that is in it. God owns the earth. And everything that is in the earth. Number two. We saw that God is pleased. To give his resources. To his people. God is pleased. To give his resources. To his people. Number three. We saw that God releases or gives his resources to his people on the basis of covenant work or wisdom. God releases, God gives his resources to his people on the basis of covenant work or covenant wisdom. And then we began to look at this covenant wisdom that leads us to the realm of resources. Number one, That we should place the love of God above the love of money. Place the love of God above the love of money. Number two, make kingdom vision your major reason for financial blessing. The vision for the kingdom should become the major reason for financial blessing. Number three, promptly obey. The law of sowing and reaping. Promptly, promptly, promptly obey the law of sowing and reaping. Number four, organize and order your resources and finances. Don't be disorganized. Organize it, order your your resources, order your finances. Number five, decrease your expenditure and increase your investment. Decrease your expenditure. Spend less. Expend less and invest more. Number six, invest strategically. Invest strategically. And we saw areas of investment, the area of drastic need, the area of your potential, the area of your wisdom or expertise, the area of your affection or passion, What you love, the area of your learning, knowledge, or training, the area of divine direction or revelation. These are areas where investment could be done. Now, we are going to point number seven all the way to number twelve. And number seven said, avoid the lifestyle of borrowing and indebtedness. Avoid the lifestyle of borrowing and indebtedness. The Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 12. Deuteronomy 28 and in verse 12. He said, The Lord thy God shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season. And to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. And thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt not borrow. Borrow. Thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt not borrow. Proverbs chapter 22 and in verse 7. It said, The rich rule it over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. The rich rule it over the poor, and the borrower is the servant of the lender. There are four things. I want you to learn about borrowing. Number one. Borrowing 
is the decision to get an alternative to God as your source. The decision to get an alternative to God as your source. I mentioned two others in the first service and I won't get into that now. It is the decision. It is accusing God of inefficiency. God, you are too slow. I can't wait for you. As an alternative. Secondly, borrowing is emptying tomorrow into today. So that when tomorrow arrives, it arrives empty. It empties tomorrow into today. So that when tomorrow arrives, it arrives empty. You already spent the money that has not come. So tomorrow is empty. That is borrowing. It's emptying tomorrow into today. So that when tomorrow arrives, it arrives empty. Number three. Borrowing is the destruction of the joy of increase. The destruction of the joy of increase. There are people who are not happy when salary comes. Because the salary was spent before it arrived. There are people who are not happy when their money arrives, when they are, when the money they are expecting arrives. Because the joy died. The, any joy they would have with increase died. Because of borrowing. Number four, borrowing is the establishment of the status of servanthood. The establishment of the status of servitude. The borrower remains a servant. When you borrow, rather it is the acceptance of the status of servitude. Is the acceptance of the status of servitude. The borrower always remains the servant of the lender. Somebody say amen. Oh, if all this is true, then borrowing is not what to go near. Destroys your joy of of increase. It is not what to go near. I told the story in the first service. Of a man who told me with his mouth. He said, tell the church, tell the people you preach to never to borrow. Billionaire. He said, before he borrowed, he had up to a billion dollars to his name. Cash. Liquid. But he can't boast of that anymore. Because he's servicing loans. Servicing the interest of loans. And he said to me, he said, it looks like some of these financial organizations... Want you to fail so they can repossess your business. They want you to come to a point where you are unable to pay back the loans so they repossess your business. That will never be your portion. That will never be your portion. On the other hand, the man told me, he said, he has never borrowed before because he learned that borrowing is anti covenant. This man runs in billions. He has not borrowed before. And he will not, but he has enough money of his own to start any project and to be paid later. Every taste and every appetite for borrowing, I command it dead now. At all costs, avoid borrowing. But if for any reason, you have what they call a payment agreement. Okay, two ways where borrowing may be allowable. Allowable. Where you have an investment or you have a property or a possession that is equal or most times heavier in value than what they gave you. They gave you a hundred million and they are holding your house worth a hundred and fifty million. 
technically you are not owing each other. Am I communicating? But in most cases, the challenge comes when they need to repossess the house and then sell it for less than... Amen. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If that can be avoided, that must be avoided. But technically, they are holding what belongs to you. You are holding what belongs to them. That's one scenario. Another scenario is where you are giving an agreement of payment. This thing is 100 million. Pay 20 million now. Pay 30 million in five months time. Pay the balance of the 50 million in eight months time. Technically speaking, you are only indebted when you default in the agreement of payment. Am I communicating? So, what you must do, since that is the term of payment, you strictly follow the term. If you cross the term one day, two days, three days, four days, you are out of cover. You are out of cover. You are in debt. You are a borrower. And you are working anti-covenant. Am I communicating? Is that clear to somebody? Avoid the lifestyle of borrowing and indebtedness. Number seven. Eight. Ensure a demarcation between business capital and expendable income. Business capital and expendable income. Between what is capital for the business and what you can spend. I read in Genesis 47, verse 23 to 24. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and you shall sow your land. And it shall come to pass when you get profit, the increase. You don't spend all the profit for Anything that comes your way, no. You shall give a fifth part to Pharaoh. That is called your tax. 20%. You, and then four parts. The balance of the 80% out of it, you shall sow your field back. You shall reinvest. So you get the capital back into the business. And then another portion for your food. Another portion for those of your household. Another portion. For your little ones. There is a demarcation. Now if you look at Proverbs chapter 24 and in verse 27. It takes it a little bit further. He said, prepare your work without. Make it fit for yourself. That is, face your business. Develop your business well. And afterwards, enjoy your life. Build your, your house. Did you see that? He said, put investment ahead of enjoyment. Put investment ahead of enjoyment. Now, if you look at the Living Bible version of that scripture, it's the way he puts it. Develop your business first before building your house. Develop your business first. Let your public impact be superior to your private lifestyle. Your public impact. Another way to put it is give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Mark chapter 12 verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Somebody say, Amen. Can somebody say a louder, Amen? Amen. Can somebody say the Lord must say, Amen? Amen. Salary of 10 million. Sorry, income of 10 million. Maybe salary of 10 million, 20 million, 50 million. You have paid your tithe of 5 million out of 50 million. 
you have recurrent expenses and overheads to pay sal salary of staff and other things like that of another how many two point something million or five million whatever you have some percentage for capital reserve or for reinvestment and then you take a percentage as your own salary you are CEO you are whatever but this is what comes to you we know all the money is yours but let there be a separation first hello if you say 50% is both reserved for reinvestment it is not out of that 50% that you take house rent. It's not out of that 50% that you send to somebody in need in the village. It's not out of that 50% that you buy a car strictly for enjoyment and not for the business. It's not out of that 50%. Listen, where there is no demarcation, there will be mismanagement. And the outcome of mismanagement is poverty and bankruptcy. Did you see that equation? Where there is no demarcation between what is business and what is personal, there will be massive mismanagement. And the outcome of mismanagement is poverty and bankruptcy. That's why there are people, the business can no longer pay rent of, of the premises they are using. Business cannot pay uh, staff anymore. Even though the business was doing well at, before, but he, he, he took the money, gave this friend, you know, and there are some people who are in the business of borrowing people, borrowing people, borrowing people. Friend, this person, that person, borrow, 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 borrow. Let me tell you, there are so many people in church today who are almost not in talking terms with each other because of borrow. He asked me to give him 50,000, 1 million. I trusted him. I gave. There is a way I give people money. When somebody says, give me 1 million, borrow me, I will give you back next month. Most times I tell them, I am not a bank. You can borrow from bank, but I can give you. Like the Bible says, give and expect not back in some cases. So, you know what I do? I give them what they may keep if they can return. You ask me to give me give you one million? Well, I, am, I might not be able to give you one million, but I can give you 10% of what you ask. Take a hundred thousand. Let that be a point of contact for what you are trusting God for. And then, if you want, bring it. If you don't want, no challenge. If you bring it, I will appreciate you and give it to another person who is coming for borrowing too. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Otherwise, you just there are people you can the last thing you want to do is to take your business capital and borrow it to anybody or borrow any percentage to anybody. It doesn't matter who the person is. You can give them a generous welfare. You can give them assistance from your own portion of the income. Let the business grow. When the business explodes and the money is plenty, you can do more good to more people. To more people. If the business become bigger, if the business increases. But this generosity of today might be actually stupidity. That will lead to extreme bankruptcy and poverty tomorrow. Am I communicating? Some people may say you are stingy. It is not stinginess. It is, it is wisdom of today to secure the future tomorrow. Yes, do good. But do it out of the portion. Out of the portion that belongs to you. Now listen to this. If you were working in government and they pay you 500,000 a month, can you do anything for people more than that 500,000 without stealing? The highest everything you can do is within that region. 
That is how this matter is. You are the business owner. You have placed yourself on two million a month, one million a month. Everything you can do is within that amount for now. As the business grows, your own percentage grows. What comes to you will grow, then you can do more. As the business grows, what comes to you grows and you will do more. Today, what belongs to the business as a whole can become what is coming to you per month. Tomorrow, if you allow the business to grow. Somebody say, Alleluia. Hallelujah. Another person say, Alleluia. Are you learning anything at all? I am telling you the number one thing that has run many people down out of business capital. Say, somebody say, I went to America. I went to London. I just brought some shoes and I just brought some suit. Out of the money you are using to trade, you carry money to buy shoes. Hmm. You buy shoe with money today. Tomorrow you may walk barefoot for using the wrong money to buy shoe. That is not what f- money you are using to buy kerosene to sell, to buy gary to sell. Money you have, you have dipping hand inside it to buy shoe, dipping hand inside it to buy phone. Who are you talking to? Buy Nokia phone. Buy that other, you know that other small phone? Eh? Touch, uh, buy it for now. Buy touch light for now. You can have headlamp tomorrow. Yeah. Using capital to buy dress. There are some suit you should not prize. You say, how much is this suit? You say, 50,000. I say, 50 what? This suit, is it, is it a practical mantle? Please keep it later on. There are shoes you don't price. There are houses you don't price. I, I can't live in this kind of house now. In the first service, I told them, how as a medical doctor myself, my wife, medical doctor, we lived in one room. Not one room self-contained, one room. You wanted to bath, you come out of the room to use bathroom with about seven to ten people. You wanted to go to the restroom to rest. You use, you go outside. You can't rest because you're under pressure. You wanted to go to the kitchen, you come out. During our 25th anniversary, we went to that house. Entered the room. They will show it to us one of these days. And the man who is living in the room now say, hey, how favored he is. That the room he is living now, we once lived in it. He opened the room for us. When you enter the room, that you cannot branch left or right. The room has finished. And when I come out of that room, I walk with dignity. You will never know where I'm coming from. Receive and power will be flowing everywhere. Nobody knows where I'm coming from. I'm a, you are the only one overbordered about where you are now. Hey! Hey! Look at somebody by your side say, make a demarcation. Say, delay your gratification today so you can have your satisfaction. Tomorrow, delay your gratification today so you can have your satisfaction. Tomorrow, again, say, delay your gratification today so you can have your satisfaction. Tomorrow, give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Please take your seat. There must be that demarcation between business capital and expendable income. Otherwise, 
the ensuing mismanagement will lead to poverty and bankruptcy and business failure. Many business failure happen because people don't know the difference between what is theirs and they can spend and what belongs to the business. Hallelujah. Number nine, employ diligence in business. Diligence. Hard work. Proverbs chapter 10 and in verse 24. Proverbs 10, 24. Diligence in business. Okay? I missed that again. Alright. Proverbs 10, 27. I thought you read that in the, in the first what's going on <laughs> alright let me let me get this for sure Proverbs 10 16 11 16 a gracious woman retaineth honor but strong men energetic men they retain riches. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with your might. Whatever. Proverbs 12, 27. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting. He is so lazy that what he took while hunting, he couldn't roast it. But the substance of the diligent man is precious. How many of you know the animal they call the sloth. It is the most sluggish animal to my notice on earth. Can you show us? This guy sleeps about 19 to, about 19 to 20 hours out of 24 hours. That guy, that guy you are seeing. He can sleep hanging on a tree. Maybe they will show you the picture of that one. Sleeping in a hanging position. That's right. No, no, that's not, that's not the, I'm talking of, I'm talking of a sloth. Hanging on a tree. It is so slow that algae grows on his body. It is said that it, it takes about three weeks or so for his food to digest. I think it is from there they get sloth food. Slothful. That will never be your portion. Every trace of sleepiness, every trace of laziness in your life, I command it to die now. I command it to die now. I command it to die now. Take note of two things. One, nothing is glorious until someone is serious. Seriousness in life is the way to gloriousness of destiny. Until someone is serious. Until someone is serious. Until someone is serious. Second, focus is key to impact and speed in life. When you are focused in life. And focus is a product of diligence. Do you know there are people who are so slothful and sloppy. You will never find them on duty. You won't find them. The man has a mechanic workshop. You come by 9, you can't find him. You come by 10, you can't find him. You come by 11, you can't find him. 
He has a spare pass shop. He has a shop in the market. You never find him on duty. The law of focus says, anywhere you are, be there. Be there, be there, be there. Anywhere you are, be there. Whatever you are doing, do it. Children, I'd like you to wake up. The road you follow today is what determines the place you end tomorrow. When I was 11 years old, we did a three day dry fast. My first dry fast, no food, no water. 11 years. During the course of that fast, another 11 year old boy was with us during that fast. Day number one. It was evening about four. I said, oh boy, how far will they fast? Say, ah, so sorry. I forgot I ate. Day one. Okay, don't forget tomorrow. Day number two. Ah, sorry. It was evening. I forgot. I, I just mistakenly ate food. That was how three days passed. And this guy was never serious. With that spiritual assignment. Today that guy is alive. But nothing serious. Has happened in his life. No means of livelihood. Nothing. At the age of 50 something. Nothing. Living on others. Don't depend on your father's resources. Isaac did not. Labor for yourself to become a person of yourself. While we were growing up, we come from a big house, big family, many children, and then business family, luxury bosses. My mother used to tell us, she said, your, your family is big. If they should share your father's property to everybody, how much do you think will come to you? He said, wake up and be a man of yourself, independent of anything you see. That was what I did. I behaved and functioned like I didn't have a father. And I squarely faced the future. In Form 5, what you call SS2, during holiday, long vacation, my father has luxury buses that run luxurious buses, big buses. And I went to him and said, sir, can I become a bus conductor? Look at me and say, really? Or say, yes, let me just, I want to join the bus. Let me join the conductors. Let me say, really? Yes, really? Yes, all right, go, go ahead. And I joined. Travel from Lagos to Kano. That was our route. Idom Motor Park in Lagos was our base. And then Mando Road Park in Kaduna was another base. And then in Kano, I've don't, I can't remember the, the name of that park now. Angwauku, Angwauku Park. That was our base. I knew all the road from Lagos to Shagam to Ibadan to Oyo to Obomaso to Ilorin to Jeba to Mokwa to, to Tegina to Biriningwari to Kaduna all the way going to another road. I'm sure, have, you, have you known, have, have you passed that road before? To Jaji, to Zaria, just just keep going. Just that was our route. It was like, and I was not empty pocketed. Oh yes, it, 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 I, I'm sure it gave us even more money than most civil servants. Then you will labor, but the labor was rewarded. I did many things for myself at a young age. Became a medical doctor. That brief practice time, I walked in three places, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. On the way back from the night walk, I drove people inside the car. Which way, which way are you going? Zaria Road. What do you call that place? Um, from Jankwano Hospital, Plateau Hospital, that road all the way to 
Zaria Road, Nas, what do you call it? I mean, engineers, all the way. Be blasting in tongues while driving. It didn't take anything. Your labor of today lays the foundation for your rewards of tomorrow. Life is a fertile ground. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? There are people who think that they just arrive and succeed at something. No, no, you don't arrive like that. He becometh poor. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. Anybody whose hand is slack must lack. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. Somebody say amen. One of my children asked me, he said they wanted to do something. And my wife said, can I assist you with the money? He said, no. I want the money by myself. He said, no, let's just assist you. To. He said, no, 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 no. Who gave you your own money when you were at my age? Let me do it by myself. You have a story of how you rose. And I want to have a story too. <laughs> Next thing is, phone was sold. Uh, so I can achieve by myself. I don't want to, to just be there and say, uh, Papa give me, Mama give me. Am I communicating? You are going places. Before you give your children your wealth, please give them your wisdom. Otherwise you are producing rich fools who will not have a future. your wisdom. Whatever wisdom produced you, whatever wisdom made you who you are, give them your wisdom. Employ diligence in everything you do. In your place of assignment, please when people come to look for you, be there. That is employ diligence in business. Number 10, employ excellence. 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 Give your best. To what you do. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. All the way to verse 4. Then this Daniel was preferred. Above the presidents and princes. Because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought. To set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes. Sought to find occasion against Daniel. Concerning the kingdom. But they could find no occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. He was faithful. An excellent spirit was found in him. Please note the following. Excellence. All right. Quality brings both quantity and prosperity. Quality brings quantity. Quality brings prosperity. Anything you do, give it your best. If you won't do it excellently, leave it completely. Leave it totally. Leave it totally. Leave it totally. Secondly, average impute will at best produce average income. If your impute is average, your income can never be more than average. Average impute will at best produce average income. Those who do the average things, 9 to 5 labor, 9 to 5 employment, job, 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 pursue, pursue. Those are average income. If you want to, if you want more than average income, will have more than average input. The owner of Holiday Inns, one of the co-owners, I think it is Wilson, he said that you can become successful. If you will do far above average, if you will do at least nothing less than 12 hours of labor in 24 hours. If you want to do that, nothing can stop you 
from going forward. Thirdly, the price paid for excellence will always outweigh the cost of excellence. The price paid for excellence will always outweigh the cost of excellence. The price paid for excellence will always outweigh the cost. Whatever it costs you to do it well can never be compared to what it will pay you. What it will pay you. When you are making a business presentation, let the excellence be such that the people are convinced beyond any doubt that you are the best person for the job. Excellent. From your presentation, from you. there are people who appear at the interview. The way they look has already failed them. The look failed them. Hmm? Appear, maybe appear with Babariga. Wearing canvas. Red shirt, inside green suit, with purple trousers, and a yellow shoe. <laughs> if that is possible. And he arrives like a color disaster. <laughs> Even if dogs see him, dog will bite. You know, if dogs see what he doesn't like, say, whoa, whoa. And you know, whoa is a curse. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa to you for wearing such a disaster. <laughs> there are people when you see them, you like them already. You just like them. There is something lovable, likable, admirable, attractive. Already from their personality, a sweetness of spirit. A comportment of mentality. A dignity of appearance. And, and you like him before you ever engaged him. And then by the time he begins to deliver and there is an electricity of mentality. <laughs> then you say, this is the right guy. This is the guy for the job. Excellence. Good enough is never good enough. Don't ever, don't ever forget. Good enough. This is good enough. Don't settle for good enough. Settle for far above average. It's not good. Good enough is never good enough. This is good enough. No. Go for the best. The very, very best. And I see that spirit of excellence coming upon somebody. You believe? Say it loud, amen. amen. Number 11. Do what you know. And know what you do. Do what you know. And know what you do. The summary of this says, Be knowledgeable in your line of assignment or investment. Be knowledgeable in your line of assignment your line of investment. Be knowledgeable. Know. Know. Do what you know. Know what you do. That is. Anything you find yourself doing. Know it. Know it very well. Do what you know. Let what you decide to face in life. Be what you know. And if you decide to attempt something. That you didn't know before. Get to know what you do. Am I communicating? If you dare to attempt something that you never knew before. Dare to know what you do. Know it. The rules of basket, the rules of football. Are opposite the rules of, of handball. Am I communicating? You play football with leg. You play handball with hand. Attempting to play football with the hand. What is that? Foul. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do you know when David was
was to face Goliath. Saul gave David his weapon. Let's look at it in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38 to verse 39. 1 Samuel 17, 38 to 39. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an helmet of brass upon his head. And also he armed him with his coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon his armor. And he said, or oh, try to go. For he has not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. So he carried what he proved. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And so on and so forth. The rest of it is story, history. Many of us are trying to walk with what we have not proved. What we don't know anything about. Oh, coming to this business, that is what people are succeeding now. You know nothing about, you are not interested in knowing anything. You put your money in what you know nothing about. The next thing is colossal losses. Even if somebody said, this business is giving people 10% on their returns on investment a month, or whatever it is, find out what are they doing that brings that 10%. What is their trade? What do they do? What do they sell? How do they make the money? If you are not convinced, don't deny it. If it can't be explained, something will be wrong. Take note of these two things. One, what you have proved is what will give you proofs in life. What you have proved. If you are going to get proofs most of the time, it will come from what you have proved. Two, your profit and victory are in that which you have proved. Your victory, your profit is inside that which you have proved. David received victory from the stone, the catapult he has proved. He had proved. Be knowledgeable. Increase your knowledge in insurance. Increase your knowledge in property development. Increase your legal knowledge. Increase your knowledge of medicine. I knew a man who was an ultrasonographer. He traveled around the world to learn the ultrasound. He went somewhere to the east. Far east. To learn under somebody who had seven PhDs in ultrasonography. He told me with his mouth. And this man was a destination. Where people needed a scan and they wanted to be sure that this is the scan result. They went to him. Because he was knowledgeable. He knew. He learned from the best. And he was in millions in his realm. You do what you know. And know what you do. Learn. Learn. And learn from the best. Somebody say a loud amen. Is somebody getting anything here at all today? Many people stop schooling. And also stopped learning. It's an error. It is possible to stop former schooling. But you never stop learning for life. For life. You learn new things. You learn different things. The way of doing things continuously. For life. Finally. Uphold integrity. And be faithful. Be faithful. Be trustworthy. Be trusted. Be trustworthy. If you are going to succeed. Genesis chapter 31 and in verse 38 and 39. Genesis 31. These 20 years, Jacob was talking to Laban. I have been with you. Your ewes and your she-goats have not cast their young. And the rams of your flock I have not eaten. I have not eaten your money. I didn't chop your money. 
I was the manager of your business affairs for 21 years. I did not chop your money. I didn't eat your money. What the was turn of the beast. Every time I suffer losses, I paid for it. I didn't come to you to say something went lost. Of my hand, you required it. Even if it was stolen, I paid it by day and by night. No wonder the man became bigger than his boss because of such level of faithfulness, such level of trust. It's not many people who can say that in their places of work. I did not eat your money. I did not chop your money. I did not eat your money. Not many people can say that. One day, a judge met me when I went to a state to preach. And he said, Pastor, I'd like you to pray for me. He said he's sitting over a case. I think it was a case of homicide or something. Somebody killed somebody. And the person who killed the person was guilty. So he sat on the judgment and he was going to deliver the judgment as, as, as scheduled accurately. The people of the, that, that, that were guilty were coming to compromise him with money and to do all manner of things. He refused. Then they began to threaten him. From the threat, they went very diabolical. Such that he said, when he appeared in court, if you want to speak or write on the case, his hands will be vibrating like this. And he followed him out, 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 out. He said, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. He said something that I will never forget. And not many people have been able to say that. He said, I have been a judge for about 30 years. If I have eaten one naira as bribe from anybody, if I have ever been induced with money before deciding any case, one naira, let their charm work. Let them succeed. But if I have not taken one naira to influence a judgment, if I have not been, if I have not been induced to, to change the judgment, just pray with me. Whatever they are doing will not work. I say, I agree with you, sir. I agree with you. And I pray with you right now. Elderly man, his son was my classmate. I pray with you now. I decree that this agenda of evil cancel. You will not be a victim. And so he stood. Am I communicating? Integrity brings authority and prosperity. It brings authority. It gives you spiritual authority. And authority in every realm. Beloved brothers and sisters. God... Is looking for people who are faithful. Let me round up because our time is, 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 is literally up right now. In in the book of Second Kings chapter twelve and in verse fifteen. Already say moreover, they reckon not with the men into whose hand they deliver the money to be bestowed on workmen. For they dealt faithfully. They didn't ask the people, the project manager, the project supervisor, the head man, and all of them. Nobody put them under pressure. Tell us about the money. He said, because they, they dealt faithfully. You cannot say that in today's world. Faithfully. Financial faithfulness. Luke chapter 16 verse 10 to 12. Luke 16, 10 to 12. Luke 16, 10 to 12. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Keep going. And if you have not been faithful, if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that is money. If you have not been faithful in money matters, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you cannot be trusted with money, who will give you real riches? Because riches is beyond money. Verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, 
If somebody asks you to look after his property for him and you cheated him, who will give him what is your own? Are you seeing that the scripture is complete? Proverbs 28 and in verse 20. He said, a faithful man will abound with blessings. But anybody who is in a hurry, 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 hurry to become rich. Let me dupe this man and make money. Let me cut back. Let me do this. He will never be innocent. And neither also will he have a future. Somebody say a loud amen. This kind of message calls for repentance. Lord, where I have fraudulently dealt with resources in time past, that is blocking my future today, I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. I spoke with a man, a Christian man, neat, clean, Christian billionaire, who said, he has not done government contract since the year of 1998 and he will not do because the requirements at times are requirements he cannot meet. Give me this or give me that. He can't meet that. So he is neatly in his own business. Property business, other financial institution business, two financial institutions are tied to him. He's in another Agricultural business is number one in that field in this country. And he said, he has not. One day, he was to do a contract of something, something billion. And they said he should uh, just sign that he has supplied the thing. And then they will give him some percentage and they will keep the rest. He said, keep your money. I don't need any of it. I'm not doing until the president of the country at that time said what happened. He told him what happened. He, the, that was how everybody was summoned. That man said, if you give me 100 million and you say, keep this 100 million for me. He said, the way you gave it to me is the way you will meet it 10 years later. I will give you exactly that 100 million the, in the, the same money you brought. He said, I won't even put it in business and return it back to you when you need it. Since you didn't ask me to put it in business. That man started flying his personal aircraft in his 30s. 30s. He has bought nine since then. Not bicycle. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Look at your neighbor say it works. Is anybody getting anything here today? Yes, sir. Let me tell you the story of I.K. I grew up to meet I.K. In our house, in our environment. This man came to our town of Otopo, in Otopo town after the, the war. As a mechanic. And he's looking for where to walk. And things to do. Maybe early 70s. And he said when he arrived. Many of the men who were doing lorry transport business then. My father was and his old, all their contemporaries. They didn't know that the engine of the vehicle can be repaired. Then if an engine knocked, you put it aside and buy a new engine. So this man came and saw plenty engines on the ground. And he said, what's happening? He said, oh, the engine has spoiled. So we bought new ones. He said, no, no, no. Engines are repairable. They said, really? Okay, repair it. He repaired it, changed the rings and everything. Bam. It's working like brand new. They said, how much do we pay you? He said, test it first. This is not for money. Ay, 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 ay. Test it first. This is not for money. Of course, everybody tested it. It's not for money. You can use this one first. If you have another problem, let me know. The man became an instant hit. The number one 
repairer of all engines at that, at that time. From engine to spare parts shop. From spare parts shop, the last time I met him, I was already in ministry. His children are all abroad schooling. Major importer of heavy duty machines, tractors, all manner. Billions. From a young motor mechanic. He could have harvested all those engines and taken them away and told the people, let me take them and dispose of them for you and repair them and sold them. He could have continued that business. In fact, he could have refurbished the engine and brought it back to them as new. But that was how he won good his way. On the platform of integrity and character. He was, he told me the story with his mouth. Platform of character and integrity. And went his way. You are going places. Stand up on your feet. Take your seat. Anybody heard word today? And you didn't pay anything for this word. Will you give God the praise then? Stand on your feet and give him the praise. Give him the honor and the adoration. Lift up your hands and worship him. Honor him, adore him. Magnify him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Worship to your name. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. How many of you can genuinely from your heart say thank you to Jesus for this word? Alright, lift your hands and say, Father, thank you for your word to me today. To you be all the glory, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Again, Father, Father thank, you thank you for your word, for your word to, me to me today. today. To, you alone, to you alone, be all the glory, O oh Lord, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Open your mouth and speak to God. Precious name. Say after me, say, Father, Father I come before you, come before you today, today to receive, to receive the, grace the grace to avoid, to avoid the, lifestyle the lifestyle of borrowing, of borrowing and indebtedness. The, the, the grace to demarcate, to demarcate between, between business capital business and expendable income. income. The grace the to be diligent to be in business. In business. The, the grace to employ, to employ excellence. excellence. The grace to know what I do and do what I know. In the name of Jesus. The grace to uphold integrity and be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I receive that grace. Oh Lord, open your mouth and pray. I receive that grace.
In the name of Jesus, lift your hands and say, Father, Father I, connect I connect my life, my life to the financial mantle in, in the house for financial, for miracles. financial miracles. You know, someone came last time all the way from America and she said what she came for was financial miracles. It is possible. Miracles of depth, freedom, depth, forgiveness. And several other kinds of miracles. Divine wisdom, favor, that produces unusual openings. Lift your hands and voice and say, Father, Father I, connect I connect my life, my life to the financial, the financial mantle, mantle in this house in this for house. Financial, financial miracles. Financial miracles. I, connect I connect now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands and say, Father, Father I receive your help and deliverance from every financial rod I have found myself in. I receive deliverance, freedom from begging, from borrowing, indebtedness, laziness, depending on others for survival. I receive your help now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. I receive your help. In the name of Jesus, we all felt very touched concerning the testimony of that young sister, that daughter of Zion, that was delivered from the camp of the terrorists, of the killers, kidnappers. Father, give us a new beginning in Nigeria. Can you pray that prayer? Say, behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Father, give us a new beginning. Give us a new nation. Lift your hands and say, Father, Father we, ask we ask that you will do a new thing, thing in our nation, in our nation. Now. now, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Father, Father, give us give a us new nation. A new Nigeria, Nigeria, give us give a us new nation. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. New nation. 